Yo, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy, King Sanders here, and we are back with another day of sports betting. This is going to be for Saturday, April 9th slate of NBA and MLB games. I'm super excited to hop into it. We don't have a huge slate of NBA. I think we've only got like four games because I think that Sunday is a huge day for the NBA. Um, but we do only have four games, so I've only got one official play in there. But we have a huge slate of MLB games, so I do have two plays in there. So a total of three plays. I may add another NBA play, but... The NBA, they've just been so weird. They've been putting out the player props so late in the day that it just makes it really hard to find these plays um, unless if you like do research beforehand. But then even if you do the research beforehand, then you're pretty much guessing at what the line's going to be. It is, it's just kind of difficult to bet on player props right now. So I am going to take a look at the lines once they do end up coming out. And hopefully... We can find some gems. I think, uh, you know, there's always value somewhere. So hopefully we can find some. Um, first, before we hop into it, I did just want to go ahead and say thank you guys so much for all the support on yesterday's video. Like I said, it was very hard for me to come out and say, you know, stuff like that. But truthfully, it does mean a lot to me. So thank you guys for that. Um, next, I did just want to go ahead and say that we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers. So if you guys are new, make sure you guys do like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, next, I did just want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to all of our members here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do. And thank you guys so much for giving such a small channel, such a big chance. As I always say, it truly does mean the world to me, um, really does keep me going. So thank you guys so much for that. Now let's go ahead and do a quick recap. As of yesterday, we went one, one and one. It was a very weird day yesterday. Um, but let's go ahead and do a quick recap of it. Um, so first we did have the Hawks plus four versus Miami. That one did end up being a push year for us. The Hawks were actually winning at halftime by like three, um, but Miami did end up pulling through for the win. Uh, ended up winning by exactly four points. Kind of a tough beat there. Then we had the Suns. Team total over 112 and a half points here versus the Jazz. They finished um, one and a half points short. They finished with 111, um, but the Jazz really just gave up and they ended up losing the game pretty big. So, you know, maybe if the game was a little bit closer, that one would have hit, but they ended up, it ended up missing by exactly two points. But then we had the Blue Jays. We had them minus one and a half at plus 110 value. Wow, what an absolutely insane play. The Blue Jays were down to the Rangers 7-0. to zero. They were down by seven runs at one point, and the Blue Jays ended up fighting all the way back and winning 10-8 to eight and ended up winning and covering for us. Absolutely insane. I can't believe that that happened, but um, it ended up working out for us. So technically, I have not lost an MLB play yet today, or I have not lost an MLB bet this year. Can we keep it going? No, probably not, but you know, I'm super excited to hop into it. I think I found two plays that I really like, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Our first play of the day, we're going to be taking the Pelicans and the Grizzlies under 230 and a half points here at minus 110 odds. Now the Grizzlies in their last 10 games, they have gone six, three and one to the under. So they have gone under a lot more often than not. Um, also after a loss, the Grizzlies, which they obviously j did just have the after Wow, excuse me. Following a loss, they are 13, 9, and 2 to the under. So they are under more often than not. And as a home favorite this year, which they are favored by, I believe it's five and a half points, they are 14, 13, and 2 to the under as a home favorite. Now, the Pelicans on the other side of hand, on the other side of things, is where I really see a lot of value. In their last 11 games, they have gone under in nine of them. So I do think we could see another potential under game here. And as a road underdog, they are 24 and 8 to the under, which is where I truly decided, yeah, this is going to be a play for me. So as a road dog this year, they are 24 and 8 to the under. So I love it. And just um, on the road in general, they are 26 and 14 to the under. So I think we see a ton of value. I don't think either of these teams really has a whole lot to play for. I think the um, I think the Grizzlies, they're pretty much locked in their spot. And obviously the Pelicans, they, you know, they're not they have no reason to play. So I think that we should see a pretty low scoring game. I don't think either team's really going to be trying too much. And I think that this game does go pretty under. So that's going to be our first play of the day. Pelicans and Grizzlies under 230 and a half at minus 110 odds. Um, another play that I did like, um, if you guys did want to tail it, but it's just going to be so gross that I just didn't want to make it an official play. I don't want to force anything, but I do like the Spurs plus six and a half versus Golden State. Um, the reason being is just because the um, Spurs they've covered in like their last or in like 
like seven of their last nine or something. They've had a really good cover record here recently to finish off the year. So I could see it again, but there's so many players out for the Spurs. And obviously Steph and Clay are both out for the Golden State Warriors. It's just going to be a gross game to watch, so I'm not going to be taking my chances on it. So that that's it for the NBA plays. But for the MLB plays, I do have two of them. So we're going to be taking the Cardinals, minus one and a half run line here versus the Pirates at plus 110 odds. Now, I'm going to butcher this name, and I do apologize, but the starting pitcher for the Cardinals, yeah, I don't even know how to say it. Um, but regardless, uh, he did have a 3.85 ERA last year. So, you know, not not a terrible ERA, but it's, it's you know, kind of right there in the middle. Whereas the Pirates starting pitcher, Mitch Keller, as of last year, did have a 6.17 ERA. So they are giving up a lot more runs on the Pirates side of things than on the Cardinals. So I think we see a little bit of value there. And the Cardinals last game came out and ended up winning 9-0. to zero. So it wasn't even like it was a close game. And I think that we see more of that once again. And the Pirates on the road last year. And I know this is there that this is a new year. But the Pirates didn't really make a whole lot of moves. And so um, as of last year on the road, they're 35-46 and 46, um, to the run line. So I think that we see a little bit of value there. The Pirates are not really a great team on the road or just a great team in general, but uh, specifically on the road. And like I said, they didn't make a whole lot of moves. So I think we see a little bit of value. And also the Cardinals, they only got better. Um, they added in Pujols and Molina. Both of them came back. And so, I, I mean, this Cardinals team is just clearly the better team here versus the Pirates. Now, I don't. I just think that they are going to win the second game of the series. That's all. So that's that's our second play of the day. Cardinals minus one and a half versus Pirates at plus one ten odds. And then our third and final play of the day, we're going to be taking the White Sox, but we're going to be taking the money line here versus the Tiger, the Detroit Tigers. Now, um, Dylan Cease, as of last year, he, uh, which is the White Sox pitcher, just in case if you guys are unaware, Dylan Cease. As of last year, he did have a record of 13 and seven when he did end up, you know, pitching. And the in the Tigers starting pitcher Casey Mize, he only had a seven and nine record as of last year. So and and Casey Mize, also on his career, only has a seven and twelve um, record. So he hasn't really been great when he has been a pitcher here. Um, you know, just win loss wise. So I think we do see a little bit of uh, value there. Now the Tigers did end up winning last game, and I do think that the Tiger that the Tigers did get a lot better as a team, but um, I don't think that this White Sox team is going to be a team that does get swept in any sort of a season series. This White Sox team is a very loaded roster from top to bottom, and so um, you know I think they will take one of these games, and so I'm going to be betting on it for this one. The Tigers they did end up winning last game, I believe it was five to four, so it was a very close game, um, and so it could. Could have been a coin flip at the end of the day, um, which is why I'm, I'm going with the other side on this one. I think that the White Sox do end up winning this game, um, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout by any stretch of the imagination. So that is going to be our third and final play of the day. The White Sox money line here versus the Tigers at minus 150 odds. Now that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you guys know whenever I post. Um, like I said, we are on the road to 7,000 subscribers, so um, make sure that you guys are subbed if you guys are new. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is King Center signing out. Peace.